Step one is to choose an image and put it behind the grid on Google Classroom. Here's how to do it. Google Slideshow, and you want your grid to go on top of your image. So you'll notice that the grid is a four by four grid. And so is your paper. So I'm gonna to go to the plus button up here, go to images, and I have already saved the image of what I want to draw into my photos. So you wanna make sure you do that first and choose something that you've always wanted to learn how to draw. So I chose a skull for my image. I'm gonna make it large so it fills the space. And then I'm gonna send that to the back. So I'm gonna press on it and say send to back. And do you see how my lines of my table now show up on top of my image? One thing I would recommend just in case. Step two is to lightly and carefully grid your paper. Okay, so to start your grid drawing, you're gonna to need to make a grid on your square paper. So we're using the paper that is 11 inches by 11 inches, and our grid's not gonna be completely even, but that's okay, it's still gonna work. So you're gonna make a mark every two and a half inches along the bottom of your paper. So I go to two and a half, and half is the long line in between the two and the three. So I'm gonna make a little light mark every two and a half inches. And there's gonna be an inch on the side extra, and that's okay. So I wanna keep this little extra piece over here, and it's gonna be the same as your grid online. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot my ruler up to the top and make a line every two and a half inches again on the other side. And then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to line it up with both notches and make a really light grid that's completely parallel. So do you see how it has just a little bit of extra at the end? That's gonna be the same as your digital grid. So it'll all still look the same, but you wanna make sure that that is the same on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Every two and a half inches. On the bottom. Scoop my ruler to the top without rotating my paper or anything and make marks every two and a half inches again. Now this grid, you're gonna end up erasing, so you wanna make sure that you don't draw it very lightly and that you're barely pressing down on your pencil, but you should have even boxes on your grid. So don't move as fast as I am. I want you to take your time to make your grid nice and even, knowing that you're gonna erase it eventually and you'll have a little bit extra on the right side and the top just like the digital grid where there's a little bit extra on the right side and the top. All right, so now I'm ready to transfer my drawing from my grid on my iPad, and I have to use my computer, to my paper. So the beauty of grid drawing is that we don't have to think of the whole image. All I want you to do is focus on one box at a time. And if you've never done grid drawing before, this does take a little bit of practice. So you can start wherever you'd like. I would start with something simple. So I'm gonna start in this first box up here. So all I'm looking at when I start drawing, it's much easier with the iPad, is what is in this first box. And I'm gonna to try to match that. So I noticed that there's an image that starts here and it curves down and ends about here. So I'm just mapping out what I see in that first top box. And I'm gonna to try to sketch and recreate that box. And there's also this like cool crack in the skull that I'm gonna to try to recreate. And then I move to the next one. So this one continues that curve and it looks like it ends about right here. So the nice thing about grid drawing is that you don't have to worry about drawing the whole image, which is why I wanted you to choose something that you've always wanted to learn how to draw because grid drawing is such a good step-by-step -step on drawing something because you don't have to worry about drawing the whole thing. Now, I also see, I see that top curve here, but I also see kind of the beginnings of like that eye socket on both sides, so I'm gonna kind of sketch that lightly and then change it as I go. 
So now I'm moving down here, and now it gets a little bit more complicated. So it looks like there's the other side of the eye socket. It swoops in and comes up here. Now again, I'm not worried about the whole image. I'm just going box by box. I like to kind of map out and try to figure out where the center of the box is each time. And that way I can also make sure that I'm drawing it as big as I need to, because we're taking something that's really small and drawing it much bigger. And that's why the grid really helps. Knowing, I'm drawing lightly knowing that I'm gonna have to adjust this as I go later on but you don't have to make anything up. So this is a really good drawing from observation technique using a grid like this. So I'm gonna speed through the next step and finish my drawing. So after you kind of map out each box, then you can start to look at it as a whole image. So now I'm gonna compare my drawing to my image and try to see what I need to adjust and what other details I might need to add um, and see it more as a whole instead of box by box. Because the grid method is, is really good to start a drawing, but it's not gonna help you finish a drawing. So after you're done working with the grid, then you wanna go back and try to find any detail that you might not have quite gotten right as you look at the image as a whole. And then you can erase your grid. So once you have kind of the general concept of the image, then you can work on erasing it, and which is why I told you guys, make sure you draw it lightly because you're gonna be erasing your grid. So you should have a big eraser that will help with this but I'm just gonna carefully get rid of my grid. You only do this once you have all of the major details on the drawing itself. Step three is to outline your drawing in Sharpie and erase all your pencil marks. So after your grid is erased and you're happy with your drawing and you believe you've got all of the big details ready, now is time to work with your Sharpies. So. You can decide whether to work with your thick or thin Sharpie. Um, I'm gonna start with my thicker Sharpie just to outline. It really kind of depends on your drawing. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of gonna be up to you, but I wanna make sure that I'm really happy with my drawing before I outline. And the reason we're outlining in Sharpie is because the technique we're gonna do requires water and so we need to make sure we fill our drawing with something that's not going to bleed when it gets wet. So you don't want to use just regular marker. You want to make sure that you have the Sharpies that were in your art kit. Now, because I'm drawing from a realistic image, I'm taking some artistic liberties to make this more of a stylized image more of like, think of it like a, almost like a coloring book page. So as I'm drawing, you'll see me kind of hesitate because I'm trying to make some decisions on how do I want to make this look more of like a solid line instead of a shaded skull, which is very different. Now, could you add shading with a pen? Absolutely. I'm gonna show you two different versions or two different options for this project. You can fill your drawing up with abstracted patterns and those are called Zentangles or you can fill your drawing up with realistic textures. So there's a couple different options. After you're done, tracing with Sharpie. And again, you can trace with the ultra fine Sharpie if you prefer. Then I'm gonna go back with my eraser and erase 
all the extra pencil lines showing up and that's just part of good craftsmanship. So if I tried to draw this skull without a grid, I would have a lot of sketching and a lot of mistakes and a lot of adjusting. But because I had the grid, it helped me get that awkward angle that this is at. So now I'm gonna take my eraser and erase on top of all my lines just to clean it up and get rid of all of my... Step four is to enhance your drawing using either realistic or abstracted patterns. So the first version I'm gonna do more like pattern or abstracted textures, they're called. Um, and on the internet, those are called Zentangles. So I have Google image searched Zentangle patterns and I can find all kinds of ideas for the types of patterns that I want to incorporate. So a lot of people use Zentangles with Sharpie and these black and white patterns. So that's why I'm giving you this option. So um, when you have your image, you'll wanna think about how you could do this. Um, so you'll probably wanna break up your image into more simplified um, spaces. So what do I mean is I probably put one pattern here, a different one in here, um, and then I wanna kind of break up into a little bit smaller spaces here. So I'm gonna make this one big section, the nose one section, that's a different one, that one, that one, here, here and here. So what you wanna try to avoid is having like open spaces. So think about this as like a coloring book where you have solid sections. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose different patterns that I like, getting ideas, and I'm gonna start filling my different spaces with different patterns. So let me find one. So I kind of like this kind of rainbow idea, this layered rainbow idea. The whole idea behind Zentangles is that they're very detailed. So I'm probably gonna use my ultra fine Sharpie to do my patterns and I'm gonna do one section at a time. So I'm gonna start over here with this little section and I'm gonna build up this rainbow pattern in this section. And yeah, they take time. This is why this is gonna be an ongoing project that you can kind of pick up whenever you have a little bit of free time in class or if you're finished early with the project. want to keep in mind that some of your spaces are really large so they're going to take quite a bit of time to fill so you might want to choose patterns that aren't as intricate for those bigger spaces now this is something that you know you can continually work on <clears throat> some people find that zentangles are um, very relaxing and they help you kind of zone out and so when your brain is you know going a million miles an hour and you need to just chill out for a minute a lot of people like to turn on music and work on these patterns because there's something relaxing about knowing what to do and just having to repeat that over and over and over again um, this one ends up being kind of like an optical illusion if you do it right. So I do like this simple one, but it does take time. When I'm doing these entangles, I like to rest my hand on the table and just move my fingers like that. It helps me anchor and get straighter lines than if I was like hovering and trying to draw without resting my hands down. And I'm constantly turning my paper so that my straight lines can all go in the same direction that's comfortable for my hand. So instead of turning my hand to try to change the direction, I turn my paper. You can use the thick Sharpie. Um, but you won't get as detailed designs, but that doesn't mean that if you have bigger spaces that you can't use your thicker Sharpie for those. So I know when I do time lapse, it looks like I'm moving really quickly, but you can see that, you know, how slow I need to go in order to make this pattern work. Probably choose something a little bit darker here so that you can tell the difference between these two patterns. 
but you can see how every little space and every little section is going to have a different pattern in the end.